Matt, thanks for sending me the login information. Of course, absolutely. How are you this evening? I am well, thanks. And good, good. Nancy, thanks for sharing my text so Matt could get that to me. I appreciate it. Hope you guys are okay. Yes, things are going along just fine here. Very good. Hey, Eddie, how are you this evening? Hello, Chief. Hello, Eddie. Eddie, you need to unmute. Zach is there somewhere. Let's see what I can do here. I, I, there you go. We've got you now. I got you, sir. Yeah, yeah Matt had me hung up there. You got to watch, Matt. <laughs> yeah. We've learned. I'm unmuted. Hello, everyone. Hey, Zach. Um, okay, so I do have to do that. That's all right. It's high security. I'm swearing just beforehand. Uh -huh. how's, um, how's online school treating you, sir? Is that for me? Yeah. Online what? Oh, the uh, oh, your, school. Your teaching experience now. I thought you said pool. Uh, Online pool the same as it ever was, but uh, school's going all right. We don't need to hear about your gambling, Zach. Right. <laughs> There's not much to say. I'm risk averse. Me too. I used to buy a lottery ticket. Now the only time, if I remember Christmas Eve, I'll put them in one in each person's stock, and that's about it. That's right. Hello. It is Thomas on audio. Hello. Hi, can you guys hear me? Is that coming through okay? How come we don't have the pleasure of looking at your face? I don't have a camera here on this monitor that I took from our office. We need to upgrade our intern computer if you want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we upgrade the mayor's monitor and give, give that one to me? Camera. <laughs> um, I'll see. Maybe I can dig up. Uh, an external device somewhere in the house that might still work. I'll... So this is something that we found. Oh yes, around. I've seen that. This is from the um, 250th anniversary of the founding of Albemarle County. Mm -hmm. And you know, Donna, perhaps you should find out why um, Scottsville is so much more interested in celebrating the county's founding than the county is. I think that's wonderful for the <clears throat> town of Scottsville, its residents and its town council to be so supportive. Thank you, Mayor Nancy. <laughs> well, that was a great way of uh, <laughs> <laughs> passing the buck, so to say. <laughs> Very diplomatic all around. <laughs> it's called a pivot. It's that's right. Pivot. Do we have a quorum yet? Yes. So who's on? Hey, Nancy. Hey, Dan. Um, Laura is on by phone, and uh, Chief Owinkle is on uh, iPad. So we, we have four council people? Yes. Uh, yes. OK. Then let's officially open up this evening's meeting and would you join me in saluting the flag and dan you get to kick it off i i pledge allegiance <laughs> to the flag of the united, united states, states, of america, states of america and, and to the republic, republic for which, for which it stands, stands one nation, nation under god, under god, god indivisible with liberty and, and justice, justice for all, all. thank you Mr. Unsworth, will you please call the roll? Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Councillor Bullock. Yep. And would you tell me where you are reporting present from? I'm reporting from my home. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Gritzko. Uh, here from my home. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Payne. Uh, 
Uh, we'll come back. Oh, uh, I see him. He is muted. If you wouldn't mind, there, Matt. Uh, I think it's muted on his end, sir. Yep. Uh, Eddie, try Alt A, if you would. If you can hear us. I had him. <laughs> we'll come back. Uh, Councillor Malusi? Here. And thank in you. my home. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Payne, I can see you. Can you give us a wave if you can hear us? Oh, now I can't see you. <laughs> well, I saw him. I believe we have Councillor Payne there as well. So we are missing um, Councillor uh, Peck and Munson. Okay. Eddie should be joining us, but we'll do that. Dan, Dan, um, you changed your clothes and you have a big smile on your face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, okay. I'm outside. I'm outside. I was cold, so I put a sweatshirt on. <laughs> okay. Well, um, we'll get going here that we do have everything. And please make note of our guests that uh, Chief Bowinkle and Supervisor Price is are both joining us. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Welcome. Okay. <laughs> Consent calendar. Approval of this agenda. The financial report for March 2020. Past meeting minutes for 3920 work session, 31620 regular session, and 4620 the special meeting. Uh, Laura, I right before the meeting, I did see your note about the um, uh, need for clarity, and I can make a minor adjustment to that. Um, okay, great. Um, for rest of council, my comment was regarding um, the four six meeting notes, um, item two in the first paragraph. Uh, I believe it's this, this uh, second and third sentence here. Oh, yes. Yeah. Typo there. I will clean that up. Uh, walk through the vulnerable text. Uh, suggestions is the missing word there. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> I figured there's something missing. Yep, there is a verb. <laughs> Great. Thank Noun, you. Whatever. Yeah, right. Thank you. <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> Do I hear a motion? Oh, uh, so favor. moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed. Okay, public forum on matters, on matters, on matters, not on the agenda. So anybody there either watching this on, um, through Facebook or through Zoom have public comments. Okay. Um, Mayor's report. Uh, I continue to work on here. So everybody knows um, I have been part of a community um, sort of informational call with the folks out at Yancey Elementary and um, with the health department and with Siri Russell with the um, Office of Diversity and Inclusion. <laughs> We have those on Thursday afternoons, and, and uh, both supervisors, Price and Palmer, join us. And we basically just discuss um, what's going on with the school lunch and other, other opportunities for our residents. Uh, I'll ask Laura, since you have children, do you know how Scottsville Elementary well, Scottsdale Elementary is not having uh, meals dispersed there. It's down here at the Boys and Girls Club. Do you know anything about that? Correct. Um, there are, so it seems like for the past three weeks, Elmoral County has been extending the number of um, pickup opportunities throughout the county. And specifically in our area, Red Hill Elementary is a pickup point. 
Um, the James River Boys and Girls Club is a pickup point. Walton Elementary School remains a pickup point for lunches, but they're scheduled in certain times. And it's regardless of um, families financial need. If, if they need food or the kids need food for whatever reason, they just show up and pick up what they need for the families. And that is still ongoing. Um, definitely through the end of the school year. And I would expect if we're still in COVID um, situation and status that they will continue that even into the summer. Um, also, the Yancey School parking lot and Simpson Park are very active areas for um, people getting online. So Matt and Thomas and fellow counselors, please let everybody know that we do have um, access in our parking lot and also at the library. Mm -hmm. um, Matt, do you think it's possible to get Jelani to do a public account at the Boys and Girls? I'd be happy to ask him. I don't know how their network works. Yeah, I, I would think because that to me would also be another source where people could go. Um, Chief, opening up more places for people to go ahead and have internet access in public parking lots. Do you see any issues there? Where'd Chief go? Mayor Gill. Uh, yeah. no, it's call. also my understanding that all the schools have their internet access. I know for sure Walton does. Okay. So that's another um, spot to sort of publicize for families um, that have children time trying to do work or for um, adults who are working from home and just need to download large files and so forth. Okay. I may want to come by and have, have your children do a little video so we can promote that with the, with the children. So maybe that's what we'll do next. Sounds good. Okay. Um, what else have I been doing? I was on a very interesting call last Friday. It was um, for elected officials on the national level. And I, I dare say I, I probably represented the smallest town. There were towns from, well, cities and state senators from um, California, New Jersey, chimed in and um, Christiansburg, Virginia. So, and that was revolving around um, how the banks are handling the disbursement of funds. So um, I guess we just all have to stay tuned to see how that plays out. It was an interesting conversation, um, but I had very little to, to, to contribute, so I did not contribute. Answer um, a clarifying question. What's the <clears throat> what's the disbursement issue that, that was being discussed? The disbursement was why how come the larger banks had more access to the funds than the smaller banks? And by the same token, how come the larger corporations had more access to the money than the smaller businesses? The businesses with 10 employees or less. That was the gist of the conversation, and I believe that is why they're working on um, a phase two disbursement of funds. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you. Um, anything else? I, I don't have anything else to report on this evening. So any more questions for me? Okay. Um, Dan, how are the parks? Hello. There's a picture of nature right there. Uh, all I have heard so far has been that the fishing has been active at Scottsville Lake and that people have been using more of the levee walk and also Van Cleef and other areas around town. I would probably defer to Matt to see if Matt's heard anything else beyond that. Well, Dan, I can say I was up at the lake Saturday and Sunday and it was quite busy both days. 
Charlie caught his first trout on uh, Saturday afternoon and was thr thrilled. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Congrats. Thank you. I'll send you the picture. <laughs> I would love to see it. Did he have it for dinner? Uh, no, we, we, we did catch and release. Okay. <laughs> that's wonderful. Wow. Though. That is really, really cool. I'm excited that that's one of the things that I love the most is to see kids have a chance to get out there and enjoy it. So I think the one, the one other thing I would say, Nancy, just as you asked, I, I feel very encouraged that the green spaces that a lot of people have had a chance to help in over time have really contributed to quality of life at this, this time period. Good. I had a clarifying question or additional question. At our work session, we discussed signs for the parks, you know, to emphasize social distancing, use of masks, um, gloves in public. Did we get any pricing on what signs might look like or, or a way to go about doing that? Um, I've actually noticed that Almoral County seems to have put up a number of them around down by the parks and stuff here. Uh, so I backed off a little bit. If, um, okay. if folks feel like that is still uh, something that we should put a priority on, I'd be happy to pursue that further. But uh, since we talked last, um, yeah, Albemarle County seems to have increased some of the, the visibility of their signs around. Yeah, I mean, they, they've had big signs up at, at their parks, which has been good. Um, would it be worthwhile getting something at Van Cleef at least? Maybe not the smaller parks, sort of downtown. What do others think? I would say Van Cleef and the Canal Basin Square, just okay. because that park is a major th thorough through, especially for dog walkers. Yeah. Great. Uh, well, I will send out a proposal uh, for that design tomorrow. And if you guys approve that, we'll move forward with it. Thank you. Sure. Wow. Anything else for Dan? Just on the sidebar, Nancy, um, Mountain Vista Road has become quite a popular walking area for families and dogs uh, in the last couple of weeks. Dan, have you seen that on your end of Mountain Vista as well? I know my family's passing Eddie's house a lot. <laughs> yeah, I pass Eddie's house a lot too. Oh, you cut through the property, but anyway. <laughs> but yes, yeah, uh, it's quite active up here. It's nice, you know, at, in this day and time to, you know, see some different faces. And uh, it's quite, quite popular. Anything else on this? Laura, what do you have for um, tourism and events? Um, a number of things to share with council this evening. Um, first off, um, I believe, and Matt, please correct me if I'm wrong, but we've postponed banner production, which we discussed at the last month's meeting, right. um, just to help save costs. We have, however, moved ahead with radio promotion on WNRN, and that is to help support the restaurants that are still um, serving takeout and carryout. Um, so that is that has launched um, this past this April and will continue in the foreseeable future. In regards to events, um, our first event that was on the calendar was the annual spring cleanup, and that was um, canceled, as you all know. Second event is Bateau Festival, and at this time, the committee is not sponsoring any vendors for that festival. Because it's after the governor's stay at home order end date of June 10th, we are not yet sure the impact on the fest on the James River Bateau Festival side of it. But we do know for the Scottsville side, we are pulling back. So we're not hosting a big music performance. We're not inviting a lot of vendors. Basically, we're not encouraging a huge town community gathering place one week after um, the stay at home order may, may have ended. That also impacts in Pollinator Festival. That festival's been moved um, to our community today in September. So we have rescheduled that. And then um, in regards to July 4th, the town um, committee organizes the car show and the music and family activities. And at this time we are waiting to make the final call on July 4th until we have further guidance from um, Center for D Disease Control, Virginia Health Department and the governor. Anything for Laura? 
No, I just want to thank you for your conscientiousness and planning. You know, I think the the Bateau Festival in June, I think, is a is a good decision. I don't think we're going to be, you know, let the um, open the faucet wide up on on you know people gathering together that soon after the end of our sort of stay at home. And and in terms of July Fourth, you know, I think um, you know keeping the public health and safety thing first in terms of the town's own participation and liability, I think is going to be important in our planning. But so I just want to thank you for your conscientiousness and in, in planning. I appreciate your comments, and um, I'll definitely pass it on to my committee as well for it's a collective decision. Laura, you're also doing a lot with Scene Think. Can you give us more with that as far as website and getting that out for other organizations to put their events on? Yes. Um, so I have kind of a subcommittee within the Tourism Committee that is focused on um, our website. And one of the efforts is to try and help some of the local businesses, farmers, um, and others that are hosting events get more awareness especially what's become apparent to the community with um, the coronavirus impact is that many don't have the means to have their own website. And so through Scene Think, which are resources that we're already paying for and provided by, we can host basically a landing page that will better inform the, the public of events coming up. And then those event pages in themselves can almost be like websites for some of these smaller organizations and businesses that just really don't have the means in order to, to create one of their own. So that's still in working production, um, but I hope to have an update for you next month. And, and also, um, when you first brought this to our attention, you mentioned that there would be a, a newsletter component to Yes, <laughs> yes. So one of the really great features about Scene Think, again, Scene Think, um, for those in the public that are listening in, is um, an outside vendor that helps create the events calendar on the scottsville.org website. And within that, um, we can pick events that can structure into a, a newsletter that, that can then be sent out to our residents. So it will make, instead of it being you know, a four or five step process, we can post an event on the website choose the events we want, it automatically formulates into a newsletter and you push a button. So it takes, you know, a four step process or multiple people using multiple platforms and makes it very, very easy in a 10 minute process. So we're excited to get things lined up and start using that. One of the biggest things that are missing um, that I hope the public will hear from us soon on and that is uh, we would love to have your email address so that as we launch the newsletter and start to better connect with the Scottsville Weekly, Scottsville Monthly, and the Scottsville Happenings that everyone's getting information at the same time. Um, there's something else, but I, I, I forgot during my mayor's report. The election so far is still on May the 5th. What um, the Albemarle Registrar's Office has done is mailed out to this point that we know of approximately 75 absentee ballots. Um, somewhere around 20 have been sent in, and this is as of probably today. They also have in place poll workers to keep um, the office up here open for on-site voting as well. Um, on another note, Matt did write to both Three Deeds and uh, Rob Bell's office, basically making the argument that we keep our election in May and not move it to November. Matt, have you heard any more about that? Uh, both of our representative confirmed receipt of the message and thanked us for the local information. They passed it along to the governor's office uh, for their information as well. The governor's recommendation is to move all of the May local elections to November, but that action requires approval by the General Assembly, which has its reconvened session this week. So there should be General Assembly action on that uh, that will know uh, for sure which way the election is going by this time next week. Mm. Okay. Okay, thank I you. I just have a clarifying question for voters. Um, if people 
want to participate by mail, and I, and I must compliment the Albemarle County Registrar's Office for getting these um, absentee ballots out in a hurry. Uh, we got ours a couple weeks ago. Um, <clears throat> if people vote, and 20 already have apparently, and the elections move, what happens to those votes? They throw them away. Okay. So people can go ahead and vote, and if it's moved, they just know that they'll have to know to do it again. Yes. Okay. But we're not going to let them move it. Do we um, a question? Do we have clarity on what um, town council action is, either if the election is moved to November or if it stays to help residents know that that is still happening? We'll we'll know a little bit more for sure next week um, if the general assembly acts. The governor's recommendation uh, would be that in moving that election from May to the terms of office would all be extended. Um, so office holders currently in office would continue until December 31st. Um, what I don't know is how it affects candidate filing, because normally there would, you know, the candidate filing deadline would move as well, but I don't know if the ballot that we have now is locked in or not. Right. I'm also assuming if the election was, del election was delayed, that those terms would also then also be shorter by three months for the newly elected people, right? Yes. Then we'd go back and reset to May. Correct. Yeah. Now, um, Matt, I've always been a little unclear on this. My understanding is the governor can actually move an election by 14 or 15 days, not months. Can you shed some light on that? Yes, the state code allows for the emergency moving of an election by weeks. For example, uh, a hurricane comes and an election needs to move by a little bit. Uh, the governor has that authority. Um, in a longer move, the General Assembly has to act. And so that's what the, um, that's what the governor has requested. The um, primaries that would have been held at the beginning of June, those are moved two weeks from, I think, the 9th until the 23rd. But I'm it not seems like the, the governor is only, re, you know, recommending to move it. He has not moved it that 14 days, Nancy, so he's probably waiting for the General Assembly, you know, to make a decision. Yeah. Okay, anybody else have comments on this? Write your representatives. Um, Eddie, do you have anything on <laughs> public safety? <laughs> well, I know you're um, safe. <laughs> I'm safe at home since March the 10th. Uh, I didn't wait for the governor to tell me to stay home, but uh, um, I always defer to Jeff. Uh, I uh, talking with family and friends is all I do, and you know things seem to be pretty positive in Scottsville. The uh, people seem to, for the most part, you know, uh, are doing their physical, you know, barriers between each other, wearing the mask and the gloves. Uh, my wife goes out and shops and she's been downtown and, and over here at the shopping center. So everyone seems to be, you know, pretty close to adhering to, to all the protocols and standards and, and uh, advisories that we've gotten. Um, so uh, as far as from a, um, a fire or police or rescue, I have nothing to report. Chief oh, Winkle is back on the call. Yeah. Chief. Okay. Chief, do you have anything to add to that? Um, can everybody hear me okay? Yes, sir. Um, so, no, not really. Everything that uh, Eddie has reported to you is pretty much what we've seen. We thought we had one concern with a uh, welfare check that ended up being uh, negative related to uh, COVID. Um, <clears throat> But uh, outside of that, everybody seems to be practicing good social distancing. Um, quite a few face masks in food line, not everyone. Um, and the, our officers do have some surgical masks uh, as far as that, uh, as far as uh, the officer safety is concerned. And uh, we're still working on getting some other protective equipment that we'll need, but it's right now, it's not, uh, not something that we'll be able to access anytime soon. Okay. But 
as time permits and things move forward, we should be able to get some of that stuff and have it in storage for the future. Any questions for Chief? Okay. Zach, ARB. Yeah, since our uh, local declaration of emergency, the ARB has not convened. Um, we are only going to convene if a property owner in the historic district undertakes work that requires a COA. Uh, that also means that properties that were rated poor in this year's inventory that we would normally require work to be done on, we are not currently requiring as long as the town is under its state of emergency. Uh, we don't feel it's prudent right now to require property owners or contractors to expose themselves to COVID-19 or risk spreading it. So when we um, come out of the declaration of emergency, we'll renew our business as usual. So we're only gonna meet right now if people voluntarily undertake work that requires COA. Thank you. Any questions for Zach? Okay, we don't have Stuart, um, so nothing on economic development. Matt, can you report on Planning Commission, Farmers Market, and Government Services for Josh? Uh, Josh is on the call. Let me oh, just go. I, Hello, yeah, I'm actually here. Hello. Um, so currently the Farmers Market is doing drop and goes, uh, or pick up and goes, not drop and goes. Um, Matt might have a little bit more information on them. Uh, Planning Commission has not convened since all of this has been going on. Everything we have going on is currently tabled until our crisis is averted. Uh, and government services has nothing in the works at the moment. Okay. Um, then I'll kick economic development back to you, Matt, if Stuart hasn't joined us. Okay. Um, the focus now has certainly been on business retention, helping our existing businesses get through this. Um, I've answered a number of questions about local, state, and federal resources. Our Chamber of Commerce has also been very helpful with newsletters and uh, meetings and phone calls, getting the word out. Um, as, um, as you described earlier, the um, federal government's uh, payroll protection program and um, uh, emergency lending programs quickly got oversubscribed in the time that it took some of the smaller banks to get trained up on how those lending programs worked. A lot of the money went out the door and that made it um, difficult for some of the small businesses in town to access that. Um, so my advice to them continues to be um, work with your bank banking relationship you have, work with your landlord and your suppliers, um, and try to bridge those financing gaps. Admiral County's Economic Development Office has a pretty good um, bulletin board of help resources as well, from many grant programs in different sectors to um, support for employees uh, laid off or otherwise affected by this. Uh, we also have um, new legislation coming through Congress now, what um, is being called um, CARES 3.5, uh, a topping off program of the lending programs which have run out. So we might expect congressional action on that in the next week or so. And um, all of our local legislators are very supportive uh, of that legislation. Congressman Riggleman uh, ran a town hall meeting on it. That was very helpful last week. And we got um, a letter from Senator Warner's office as well today stating his support for that program. Okay. Um... Supervisor Price, yeah. I, I know that the county just gave a donation for small businesses in, I believe, the rural areas um, as part of the CACF fund is, I don't know if I have that right. Can you? Yeah, what, what we did last week, thank you, Mary Gill, what we did last week is approve taking $200,000 from the Economic Development Fund that was principally put in there during a time of looking to bring in additional business, and instead that money is going to be used to help support existing businesses, much like um, you know, your town administrator, Mr. Lawless, just mentioned on the same thing in Scottsville. Um, 
we are we at the county are very much focused on trying to figure out the best way to financially survive through the economic consequence of the pandemic and still be able to provide services to the county residents um, while at the same time making some very substantial reduction in expenses because we know that the revenues are going to be down. So as you've probably seen, we're talking about $6 million just through the end of this fiscal year. And then the county is going to do the six and six after that, um, come up with the budget, do appropriations for the first six months. And then by fall, we hope to have a better sense of whether things are getting better or potentially may even be getting worse. And we're going to have to even do further reductions. Right now, we're looking at um, gapping 35 billets, 35 positions in the county. Um, that is a cost, say, a cost saving measure. Um, obviously, there will be no pay raises, no um, uh, bonuses for people doing well, no increase in the minimum wage, um, which again is a significant impact. Um, it will increase the workload on the county staff, um, but they are working very hard to, um, to you know, to fill in, um, even with reduced manning. But right now, um, Mayor, I, and this is just me, one supervisor speaking, this is not me speaking on behalf of the entire board or of the county, but I just see there is such uncertainty right now over the future. Um, just as the meeting was starting, I saw that the downtown grill um, on the mall in Charlottesville has just announced that, you know, after 21 years in, in business, they are closing permanently. Um, and I'm sure they're not the only one of our local businesses that is facing, you know, this type of a situation. And of course, that means more people without work, um, which is the most important thing because that then reduces those individuals' abilities to take care of themselves and their families. But we also know that has a consequence economically on the entirety of the county. Every time we lose a business, particularly one that's been here for over, you know, two decades, um, that's a significant sort of a loss. So I know that the county staff has been working every weekend um, for the last few weeks trying to come up with a new budget. Um, tomorrow, county executive uh, Mr. Richardson will be um, briefing supervisors two at a time um, as we get ready for another budget meeting on Wednesday. Um, but I, I, as I say, I think there is just such uncertainty right now. Um, we're working really hard to ensure that we are able to maintain an emergency strategic reserve um, because we know that there are going to be expenses that are going to come up um, and we've got to have, you know, that some degree of capacity to cover when that happens. Uh, beyond that, I, I don't know that I have a lot of specifics that I can give because I'm waiting to get my briefing tomorrow before we have the uh, budget meeting on, on um, Wednesday. Okay. Well, Matt, I think that's a really good segue to move on to staff reports and your, what you can tell us about our budget for the remainder of this fiscal year. Okay, happy to connect some of that to our budget work. We had, um, for those listening in the public, we have uh, two budget meetings uh, the past two Mondays. So council has been working closely to look at um, how the changing economy has affected the town's budget, what that lets us do or not do, and how to achieve a balanced budget, both for the year that we're in now, which ends on June 30th, and the next fiscal year, which goes from July 1st through. It, it may well be helpful to look at um, following the county's lead on six month appropriations that uh, we have just so much uncertainty about where we're going to be as a local and national economy on December 31st. Um, it, it may be beyond our ability to forecast accurately for a full year. So uh, a six month appropriation could be wiser. Uh, and then you just um, commit to making another um, update and budgeting for the second half of the year in December. Um, that's not our usual practice, but it's certainly within your uh, legal powers to do if that just feels more realistic at this time. Um, and that wasn't something that we talked about two weeks ago, 
but as you've learned more, is there is there any initial response to that? Council? Uh, I, I, I would kind of like to see us take a crack at getting something down for the year. You know, I think, you know, sort of just put our best foot forward with a year long plan and then you know, and as we go through the year, we, we, we can decide not to fund something or, you know, make an appropriation as necessary. We do that sort of as a normal, you know, course of business anyway. Um, I think I'd rather put us in a position of saying, here's sort of like a worst case scenario budget for the year. And then as the year goes on, if we're able to add things to it, we can do that. That's certainly viable. If you, you try to make a plan for 12 months, um, maybe do so cautiously and pessimistically. Uh, and then if it looks, um, if it looks better, if revenues are coming in ahead and you want to try to add some, some projects back, you're right. It's easy to make those supplementals. You do that public hearing, air it out and adopt it. Matt, I like um, that idea too, Zach. Zach, I, I want to second what Zach and Matt have just said. Okay. Yep. I am also on board with that, with taking a more, cautious approach to our budget rather than planning out a full year of expenditures i think we just appropriate funds should this matter resolve quicker okay thank you um, i want to agree with my fellow council members um passing a, a conservative budget for an entire year and then revisiting it in six months um, based on the situation and making making plans accordingly i'm much more comfortable with Okay. Um, and it, if I can, if I can share screen for just a couple of sheets and show the numbers that we're looking at in response to council discussion from the previous meetings. And um, for those who don't have video, I'll describe these spreadsheets um, as as walking through them, um, just for a moment here. So, um, council asked for a review of a few line items that are helpful in balancing the budget that we're currently in. We're about $30,000 down uh, the current fiscal year, about a $600,000 budget. So a 5% gap that we're trying to plug for uh, between now and June 30th. Uh, and that's largely due to um, a dramatic fall in small business tax payments, especially meals tax from the restaurants. So council asked for priorities in line items that could be frozen or cut uh, to balance it out for the fiscal year that we're currently in. Um, so the sh uh, Town Clerk Thomas Unsworth and I put this list together, which we can refresh and share with you every other week to give close monitoring of those projects. We identified uh, a total of $94,000 in spending um, from um, everything from office supplies and the payroll line that we use to in for our interns through um, sidewalk repairs, um, police department recruiting expenses. Uh, even uh, so we've currently spent in the, in the year to date $42,000 out of that $94,000. So there's $51,000 available as savings um, if we were able to fully freeze it and not spend anything else in those lines. Now that may not be possible, but if we can achieve about 30,000 of this 50,000, we'll be pretty well on our way towards our gap. Um, as long as our revenues come in uh, towards our revised expenditures. So I'll be watching this tracking report closely and sharing out updates on it. But then also on the revenue side, uh, this is a 600 line spreadsheet, but just a, a few lines to draw your attention towards on it with the revenues. Um, for example, the bank franchise tax is a $60,000 revenue line. It's on target, uh, but the payments don't come in until May. So once those checks are in, it will go a long way towards balancing everything out. Um, vehicle tax, uh, those checks are in, and that is a little bit higher than expected. So we're about $1,000 to the good there, which is helpful. Um, and this is the meals tax gap that we're tracking. Uh, our budget is 187,000 and we've done 133,000 so far. That's 71% when we should be at um, maybe 80%, 78% there now. 
So that shows that it's behind and we expect it to fall further behind as the year goes through. So that's really what's causing the problem that we're, um, we would expect to pull back $54,000 in the year to come. And we don't think we're gonna get all of that by a long shot. Um, and then, so total, total revenue is less than three quarters of what it should be. That's the problem that we're facing. And the deficit to date is $32,000. That's the gap that we need to close to have a balanced budget. That's the update that we'll continue to provide every two weeks to council. But you feel that we can do that? We've, we've identified how to get there, yes. Okay. We've got line items that we can control um, that, we're gonna, that we're gonna control to get there. Now, what is your um, plan moving forward to, to the next fiscal year's budget? How are you have, going to re, refigure things that are more realistic than what we started with a few months ago? I'm not as sure. Um, we need to get some clarity on the revenue side of that first. It makes, makes a big difference if meals tax is taking a 10% drop or a 30% drop. Um, so we'll, we'll know a little bit more on that in the next month. And it's, it's really hard to balance it when it's moving much. Um, so I've put most of my work in the past week on the capital side of the expenses. We had some questions about capital spending. Um, can I take a few minutes on that one and show some of the long-term planning yeah. there? Okay. Matt, can I ask a question? Yes, sir. What do we think we've seen so far in terms of the percent of meals revenue that, you know, over the last month, I mean, have they seen a 80% drop, 90% drop, 60% drop? Just if, do you have a, a gut feel? Matt, I can answer that if you like. Please. Um, Dan, we're uh, pretty close right now. It's the 20th of the month, which is the day that meals tax returns are due for the previous month. Uh, there are a couple of checks that I expect to be in the mail. So making kind of, I, I took a little bit of a rough stab at that today, <laughs> estimating a similar drop in the two checks I'm expecting from what I've seen from the other ones that have returned it. And I'd say we're looking at about a 75% drop in that revenue line. Uh, from about sixteen thousand dollars that we should have collected this month to about four. Okay, that's helpful to know what we're thinking to get a feel as we move forward. So thank you guys. That's not that, that I mean those numbers aren't good in terms of what we want to see at all, but it's realistic to know or helpful to know what the real numbers are. And the, and business owners have been candid about uh, telling us how they're doing um, when they need help and if there's anything that we can do. Um, the communication is good. Matt, I'm, I'm sorry, just to ask one aside, I'm just gonna make this note, Nancy also is, if you get reports from business owners that come through you either as the mayor or the vice mayor or either of our staff members, I mean, besides obvious things like buy more at our shop, but if there's any tweaks that you hear, things that we can do or, are ways that we can adjust anything that can help them. Please keep us advised. Absolutely. Can the I just best thing is just to uh, support them by buying from them. Dan, I and I should clarify my comment. I guess we shouldn't take uh, the the seventy five percent reduction in what the town is collecting uh, is including payments that or is not including payments that are being deferred. Um, so we have a few other restaurants who are still in business, who are still doing sales, who are deciding that they would rather, you know, set up a payment plan and punt on uh, turning over that meals tax revenue right away. Right. So it doesn't mean, I don't mean to say that we've had a 75% reduction in the overall uh, restaurant traffic. It's probably been a little bit less than that, but it's, it, before I get all of those returns in it, uh, it's a little hard to know. Mm -hmm. No, that's good, Thomas. Thank you for that clarification. Sure. With that knowledge and just knowing um, sort of what the county is working towards, what the kind of budget cuts the school system is looking at, 
even aware of some of the budget cuts this um, university is looking at, I think to move forward with a 30% cut is the place to start, not less than that for next year. And I know that's a lot, but I think that's where we need to start. Do you mean on um, meals tax line in particular or budget wide? Uh, budget wide. Unless your per perception of the numbers is that, that, that we don't need to have that significant of a cut budget wide. Some of our revenues are sturdier than others. Uh, they have flat uh, legal requirements. Mm -hmm. in franchise tax. Um, okay. One of the deposits in the bank don't drop that much. One of the things I would follow up on what Supervisor Price said, and this I don't normally talk about this too much, but given what she said about the downtown grill, maybe it's worth you also knowing that the company that I work for, World Strides, had significant layoff and furloughs this past last week. Thankfully, I wasn't mm -hmm. one of them, but many a friend and many a staff member that I've worked with for years are either furloughed or no longer working there. So that's that's a that's a large employer in Charlottesville, and the number of people affected by that is actually much larger than the downtown grill in terms of, of of what's there. So I don't know. Again, I, I mentioned that to say that the impact that we were feeling for the past six or eight weeks was demonstrated by the layoffs and the furloughs that took place last week. So like supervisors, our supervisor said, I think we'll see other things like that as people are in a place right now where they're deciding, can they hang on any longer or do they have to make these big cutbacks or whatever they have to do? Mm -hmm. Sure, and the, and the scale of that um, crisis uh, quickly gets to the need for federal action. So the, the budget drafts that we've been looking at still have zeros on federal revenues. And in a conversation with Senator Warner's staff, I, I candidly told them that and the scale of the budget problem that we're looking at. And small towns um, don't have multi-million dollar strategic reserves. Um, so we, we would um, certainly look for some congressional action to help the budgets of small localities. The CARES Act that passed uh, has no federal aid for localities with less than 500,000 people. Um, and I think Congress is seeing the need for that to change. I don't know what that aid looks like yet. Council, any questions for Matt, concerns, comments? I guess for the, you know, just in terms of our budget conversation so far, you know, now that we, we've got a plan for this year, you know, I, we need to start, you know, planning for next. Um, and I guess ostensibly pass the budget in June. Yep. So do we feel like we have enough time between our work session in May and our June public session to get that done? Or do we need to meet earlier? And I, and I think Laura's recommendation of taking that 30% cut is just sort of something like a workable number um, to get started with. Do we need to meet before our next work session um, to start doing that work? Yes. One of the things, uh, Zach, to follow up on what you have just said i would maybe we defer that back to matt and thomas we've asked them the last couple of times to keep trimming it and they keep, and they keep doing so now we're asking them to do so more so i guess matt that, that would be a question maybe i would also direct if that's okay what zach just asked you've you guys have done a great job to keep trimming it how much more do you see or do you see much more or is what you recommended just now for this last year something you can also equally recommend for next year? The continuing the same kind of short-term cuts, you know, uh, you know, pausing purchases of office supplies, that only gets you so far. Uh, and it's, it's already, already sort of baked in. And if you want to get um, more than that, it, uh, it takes more drastic action.
the the drastic action, I guess I would say that might be where we I think what Laura is saying is to get into thirty percent, Matt, does that would that be drastic action to you? Yes. Um and but Matt, I, just to clarify though, so the meals tax, I mean, that is where we have the flexible budget to do programming and, and where we don't. For new initiatives, where are the revenue sources? So all the other revenue sources you'd mentioned don't change even in a crisis? Some take more damage than others. Um, so on the business on, license is the other one that we should look at, I think, for that. Right. Yeah. On on screen now is the revenue tally that we did um, three weeks ago to to yield a seventy thousand dollar shortfall in the current year. Mm -hmm. And you can see some revenues take more of a hit than others. Business license is down ten percent. Uh, cigarette tax is down ten percent. Meals tax is down. What is that? Forty percent. Um, yeah. And but but rent we hope stays flat. Um, electric bills don't change that much. So the so the taxes that we get from Columbia Gas and um, AEP those stay the same. Um, bank franchise is based on total deposits. So if if people lost enough money and and started to zero out their savings accounts, I mean that would go down. But um, it's a little more resilient. Councilor Munson is on the call. Oh hello. Apologies, I was on the uh, phone with the IRS. <laughs> Good luck. Good evening. <laughs> Thanks. Um, they owe so, me money, so I'm never going to get it back. No. They're never going to call me back. So the the total uh, the total loss of revenue is about eighty thousand dollars, but it mm -hmm. it affects different sources differently. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's our starting point. And I, I wouldn't even rely on rent being the same. Uh, from what I've learned over a month ago, I tend to agree. Yeah. Uh, um, if anyone is curious, I just would point out while we're showing this document, <clears throat> you may have noticed there is the increase in fines there. Um, that's not an expected increase in uh, activity that's a, a change to reflect more accurately what we do in a year uh, in the past we've suppressed that number to try to not create an incentive um, but it has always come in above budget so in the circumstances we're in uh, that is merely uh, a more accurate reflection of reality well said Uh, Stuart, we've gone through committee reports. We're now um, on the last um, thing on the agenda, staff reports. So we've been going over the budget with Matt. Um, Laura suggested uh, to start retooling our next fiscal year's budget by slashing 30%. That she feels that would get us closer to reality and then the suggestion was also made to present a very conservative budget and as things return to whatever normal is going to be appropriations are made where the, those cuts occurred and you're muted thank you <laughs> okay jennifer <laughs> So any other questions here for Matt and Thomas? I just want to point out, Thomas, thank you for noting the difference in the police um, mm -hmm. revenue side. Um, Chief Bullwinkle did mention, however, they are doing less of those kind of actions because people can't get their car inspected, they can't right. get a DMV and so forth. So I would- uh, In fact, even that. I believe the courts are closed right now and probably not Correct. collected. <laughs> um, Matt, Correct. Uh, help me remember, I think that the 42 we show there is in fact still a little bit less than we have in actuals this fiscal year. So okay. I think we, we did take a little bit off of that expecting some reduction. Okay, yeah. all right, great, thank you. Sure. 
absolutely don't want to create any kind of um, budget pressure upon the police in that way. Mm -hmm. Supervisor Price, do you have anything to add? Thank you, Mayor Gill. Um, first off, I want to thank Councillor Gritsko for expanding upon the comment that I made about one business because I think he really nailed it. It's 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 a bus businesses are closing, putting people out of work, but businesses are also laying people off, putting them out of work, reducing hours, which reduces their income. I mean, it, it is so expansive the financial impact of what's going on. I did, uh, Mayor Gill. Thank you. There was one other thing I did want to mention. <clears throat> Um, the Supreme Court has said that land use planning is the quintessential function of county government. I mean, it is the essence, really, of what we do in, in, in many, many respects. There are other things as well, public safety, but, but I specifically want to talk about um, planning. Um, when this pandemic first hit, there were three considerations that really jumped out at me. The first one is that we are obligated by law to process applications within a specified period of time. The second thing is the um, property rights of individuals who are applying to do something with their property. And the third is the essential aspect of ensuring that our residents have an opportunity to make public comment on any land use application and decision before those decisions are made. So when the pandemic first hit and the disaster was called by the governor, we had an ordinance that we passed in the county for emergency operations. And then just this past Wednesday, we passed an ordinance for basically continuity of operations, which allowed us to no longer be bound by those same deadlines in terms of acting on these applications. But that does not answer the other two considerations, which is the property rights of the individuals who are trying to do something with their property and the need, the essential need to ensure that our residents have an opportunity for their voices to be heard before the county makes decisions on those things. And partly because of my previous background as a corporate counsel and a senior vice president for a corporation that was um, severely economically disadvantaged by the government delaying, delaying, delaying some processes that we were involved in, eventually costing my employer and the investors literally tens of millions of dollars as a result of that delay. I'm very sensitive to the financial impact on landowners if the county does not act in a timely manner on their applications. I am equally concerned concerned about ensuring that our, our residents have an opportunity to be heard on those applications, because what we don't want are decisions to be made without the public voices being heard. So there's this balance here that we're working on. Um, I don't know exactly what the county will end up doing on some of these. I'm but one voice of six on the board. Um, but that, that is a balance that we have to continue to maintain while also because of the uncertainty of how long this pandemic and the disaster may go on, we want to be careful to also not end up delaying so many things that we have this massive backlog that we then are unable to work through, particularly as the county is allowing positions to remain vacant. And then we end up overburdening the system and it collapses that way. So I mention all of those things to ensure, first off, that anyone is listening or watching this will know we do listen to what you say. So contact the board, contact your particular supervisor, make sure your voices are heard. Um, again, I do not know exactly what is going to happen with some of these applications, but those are the balancing considerations that at least are weighing you know, very heavily on me as these things do come up before us. And, and Mayor Gill, thank you again for letting me have an opportunity to speak. Thank you for saying things that are pertinent. Does anybody else have anything for Matt and Thomas at this point? Well, I guess we still haven't decided when we need to meet or if we can meet before our next work session to talk about our budget for next year. So I'd, li I'd like to figure that out before we move on. Do, do we want to keep a Monday meeting open at seven and just keep that standing until we resolve things? Yeah, that's fine with me. I think, you know, we also need to hear, I'd like to hear from uh, Chief Bowenkle, not right now, but before that meeting too, about, you know, what, 
based on our budget for next year, what are the things, the line items that are must do's? What are things that we, we talked about? I forget which the line of mine was particular before, but you know, what do they need to run um, an adequate police force? Um, I know we talked about freezing wages into next year. The, the uh, budget document that I got from our last meeting didn't have that included. So just make, and you know, just start slicing things out of it and see, see how far you can go. Um, you know, we can get extreme here since we're drafting. Um, but I think that'd be w really worthwhile to do and to get some good feedback from our staff um, about what we absolutely need to run um, the town and what we don't into the coming year if we're facing some significant shortages. Chief, did you want to say something? Um, no, at this point, I'd, I'd have to look at the budget to see exactly where I can make those decisions. Um, and it's not something I've done to the point. Uh, I have asked, I mean, the little, the little bit it does, I've asked the guys, um, unless it's absolutely necessary to shut their cars off when they're uh, when they're sitting rather than idling. Um, a penny here and a penny there certainly helps, but um, there's a couple other things that we may be able to look at as well. Okay. Mayor Gill, I had a couple of follow-up questions from previous meetings. Um, one is uh, CSX. We were going to try to reach out to the EPA um, and the county mm -hmm. contacts in regards to concerns of um, leakage and debris flowing into the James River, especially as rains increase and flooding increases. Has there been any update on that? The, um, the last action I took with them was a call to their emergency line uh, when it was raining last week. I saw it was after our meeting, I went out um, and uh, called in uh, gear of theirs that was right close to the river. And they did call me back from their hazmat team and they did move items, uh, their portable toilets in particular, um, Great. responsibly overnight. Um, but we don't have an active EPA complaint with them. Okay. And then um, prior to this, we were, we were very close to getting set up with the Board of Supervisors uh, joint meeting. And with elections moving, um, budgets moving, priorities and commitments moving that's still something that I think is important but I do have concerns that the longer that we wait to get something on the calendar the more difficult it will become for either this council or future councils to carry that through does meeting virtually make it easier supervisor price um, I think that um, I can carry this message back to um, Chair Galloway of the board, but would ask that the um, town also convey the message that um, just because we are dealing with the pandemic does not mean that um, the town does not want to have this meeting. I can do that staff to staff. <laughs> Thank you. Can you do that first thing in the morning, Matt? Absolutely. And. Uh, Okay. Anything else? Laura, do you have anything else? No, thank you. No. So is our standing meeting for the budget next Monday? Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. I'll notice that. Um, 7 p.m. on the 27th. Okay. Dan, Matt, anything yep. else? Matt, could you send us out another... Oh, like, thank you. Could you send us out an email reminder with the Zoom um, on Monday about that? Just so that I have it at the top of my my uh, inbox? Sure. Okay, thanks. Can I, can I also request that you send um, the spreadsheet or working spreadsheet in advance of that meeting? Absolutely, so th three, days, three days prior is the required notice of meetings and I'll have the um, budget scenario numbers for you cleaned up Great. to review then. And I'll set that up as a um, current, so current situation uh, most drastic cut and something in between. Great, thank you. Josh, do you have anything else? No, nope, I'm all Okay. Um, we had a, um, a member of the public call in uh, after the public forum part of the meeting. Um, 
Do you want to have a final call for public comment? Yes. I'm going to un unmute all the lines here. I know. They're going to have a meeting next week and nobody knows about it. The public doesn't even know about it. Hi, Bill. Nancy. Bill. Hello, Bill. Um, will you please note that Bill Heisen is on the line, Thomas? Yes, I've got that. Okay. Uh, but no further public comment, it sounds like. That's what it sounds like. So we'll get that meeting posted. Bill is still on the line, but he's muted. Um, So Matt, we'll work on getting that notice out to everybody as you have done to every meeting thus far. Uh, physically and online, yes. Yes, thank you. Anything else? I have one question of uh, Vice Mayor Malusi. I would like to know how you have positioned yourself over such a wonderful um, panorama <laughs> of uh, the Horseshoe Bend in the town of Foxville. <laughs> um, thanks to uh, UVA, I have enhanced Zoom features. Whose <laughs> 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 graph is that? Um, I borrowed this from a Reddit posting of, uh, of Scottsville. Uh, so, okay. A nice photograph. Very nice touch. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Unfortunately, they, I, they didn't have the photo credit, so I could not acknowledge them, but I will acknowledge it here. Okay. It was from the Reddit <laughs> website. Okay, it's nice. Is there anything else? Do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed? Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank Stay you. Stay healthy. Have a good night. Thank you. Closing out. Thank you.